Okay. Oh, I worked at Chuck E. Cheese, yeah. Togo's, <gasps> Best hey, Buy, man, wait, Denny's. Chuck, what, what? I was Chucky, so that's you know. what I wanted oh, to ask if you were Chucky. Man. I was Harlem oh shaking God. in a suit for yeah. sure, yeah. Uh, hitting on a mom. So man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, you can't see me, like, but I can see you. Uh, How do you hit on a mom in a Chuck E. Cheese suit? Big boy neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, he is back. Eric Bellinger, welcome back to the yes, neighborhood, sir. brother. It's easy. Happy yeah. to be here. Yeah, man. Hello. Yes, easy sir. call, my brother, yes, right here. Yes, sir. Easy call. Man, how you been, bro? I know you. Yes. I, I know you don't stop working. No, <laughs> you know what no, I'm saying. No. But but how you been these last couple since we had a chance to sit down with you? Yeah, busy? I, I've been good, man. I've been busy, and I look at it like the the job that I have. It's not work. It's right, what right. I love to do. Luckily, so I love clocking in. You Did know? you know? You always wanted to do music. Was music like in your household? Church, gospel music. Really? Yeah, Kirk Franklin and the family. Did uh, you sing in church? Yes. A, B, and sing? C selection. Really? Oh, yeah. My mom and dad was um, youth pastors oh, as wow. well. So I'm sitting on the front row every week, and I'm singing every Sunday and Tuesday. <laughs> All right. So growing up in church, yeah. did y'all have secular music at the house too, or it was more gospel than so anything? So I had a I had a big binder and folder of CDs. Mm -hmm. My aunt found it and threw it in the trash. Oh, it was that energy. What What was in those binders of CDs that uh, she threw? You away? had Chronic Two Thousand One. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, if you had church, you know, two, three, four, five days out of the week, and you. <laughs> Singing in the choir, I, I think I would throw, you know, Dr. Dre the Chronic Shit, away. Yeah, that had it. It's crazy how you found it, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah. you levit, you you gravitate towards certain music. Mm -hmm. And growing up in the church, man, do you feel like that helps you with what you do now? Yeah, from the peace and the faith standpoint, yeah. I feel like the biggest thing I took away from growing up in church is undying faith. Mm -hmm. And belief in the vision that God gave me. If I see it this way, I have the utmost amount of faith that it's going to happen. How do you go from being in church, enjoying music, possibly singing in choirs and everything, but mm -hmm. and, and, and your family being involved in the church? Yeah. How do you go from that to wanting to create music? Did you want to create mm -hmm. gospel music first or you just loved music? I just love music. Mm -hmm. um, I fell in love with like R&B music mm -hmm. towards like the end of high school when I was like graduating and, you know, I found like Jagged Edge and um, Drew Hill and right. once once I discovered that style of music that's what I wanted to do um, it wasn't the easiest transition from the pastors at the church right that's what I was going to ask you man when for one already when our kids say they want to be in the music business it's a hard business to get into mm -hmm. and everybody think that they want this but don't understand it right but also coming from your family being so involved in the church mm -hmm. how do you tell your family yeah. And not just your immediate family, but your church family as well. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to do something different than what I've been yeah. doing these last years in church. Yeah. Well, it was a it was an easy talk with my my parents. Right. Mom okay. and dad supported me 100 percent no matter what. OK. But the church uh -oh. people. I grew up in church dedicated like Simba when I'm a baby. Oh, okay. So, so you, you, you're you theirs. Like, this is ours. This is our guy. We've been grooming him. He's been singing 8 a.m. service, 10 a.m., like, period, for the the word, the mm -hmm. Bible, you know what I mean? So when they found out that I wanted to do R&B, they was not in support, and they let me know. Wow. Loud. Damn. I heard the pastor say, man, this is bullshit. Did he say <laughs> Did he say that? No, I was, I was, it, was it felt like it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it this felt, is bull stuff. It felt, it felt like it. But I just, you know, and of course I did it. I kept going, and right. it was the thing where I had to just lead a church. Like, wow. It wasn't even. So it was that involved. Yeah. It was that involved, but it's a passion and, and, and a, a calling, you know, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. real, yeah. that you just felt out you had to step out on faith even if you can't see the whole staircase. That's it. That had to be hard for you, though. It was. Looking back, <laughs> when you're in the was. rearview mirror, it's like, okay, yeah. it was hard. But yeah. as you looking through that windshield at that mm -hmm. time, bro, mm -hmm. it had to be like a hell of a decision. It was, yeah, decision. it was tough. Luckily, I went to another church the following week. I didn't just give up on God. Oh, okay, gotcha. You know what I mean? So, and I had... Went to Faithful Central and Bishop Omer gave a word that it was just for me. Right. It was like, see, you can do it. It was like he was talking about what people's profession was and how it had to do with their calling and a doctor not working on 
a patient that wasn't a Christian not making sense. Right. I was like, whoa, this is that's just one of the metaphors that, you know, he had gave that day. And how old are you around that time, Eric? Uh, this is 19, 19 years old, mm. uh, 18, just literally out of high school um, when I started to find music. So when you say you started to find music, mm-hmm. you already had the voice. Yes. Were you writing then too? No. At oh. the time, I was just a singer and a lot of songwriters in L.A., it's so, it's so many people that's like, yo, come to the studio. We need your voice. Uh, I'm a songwriter. Like who? Uh, for example, Erica Nuri. Mm-hmm. Erica Nuri is the, is the woman that, to me, discovered me, gave me my chance. And she was like, yo, just come demo these songs that I'm writing. We're going to send them to Usher. They're going to sound low-key like Usher. The label can more get the picture. And me demoing songs turned into them slowly but surely saying, Hey, we don't have a second verse. You got any ideas? Pow. You know? And so when you say we don't have a second verse, now are you writing the second verse? Now I'm writing. Now I'm writing. But you weren't a writer. No. Right. It just came from demoing songs. At first it was like, do you hear anything different with me just singing a song that they wrote, a full song? Like maybe I want to change the verb or maybe I want to change a line. I got an idea. And a lot of the people that I was working with were open to me and my ideas. So that turned into me signing with Erica to the writing How did Erica find you? Because there's a lot of, and no disrespect, there's a lot of clutter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of people that want to be in the business. Yeah. Where does yeah. a teenager or tweenager go yeah. that you find somebody that, that sees your talent? Yeah. So when I was in high school, I used to sing on people voicemail for a dollar. Gotcha. So I was singing, you have reached. <laughs> right. it was, gotcha. It was literally that. And Erica's goddaughter was one of my clients. See how God works? She called her you and said, this? who is this singing on your voicemail? It's my friend Eric. He sings He sings on people's voicemail. Now, Erica works with Babyface. Oh, my God. So now Erica's like, e, I want to sign you to Babyface. I want to do the da 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 Just like that. Man. But <laughs> you, you like, know, it's, 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 it's God's work, too. And it's an opportunity. Yeah. And knowing how to be there in the mm-hmm. moment. Like, even when they said, do you have a second verse? Even if you're not a writer, you're like, yeah, I have a second verse. You know what I'm saying? Of yeah. course. Take me to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate course drop. Watch out. Of course I got it, man. <laughs> yeah. So with, with that, you start demoing. You start and, and then what's that next step for you? Uh that, signing. That so signing to so Erica uh was like later down the line, like, yo, I got a publishing situation with Sony ATV. I got a joint venture. I want you to be Do you know this writer. language at the time? No. Yeah, right. Not at all. <laughs> right. She said, I'm going to send you these beats and see what you do with them. So me, all I know is garage bands. So right, yeah, yeah. I'm literally at the crib. <laughs> yeah. I'm hitting the space bar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I sent her back two songs, and immediately she played for the team. I had a meeting, and I was signed to Sony. And now, when Sony gets the calls from RCA, Mark Pitts, what y'all got? We working on Usher. Now, Sony says... Well, we got this kid named Eric Bellinger. We're going to send him out there. Boom. Now I'm out there. First song I write, Let Me See, for Usher. Hey, man, so when you write for Usher, are you in a writing, you know how they have like a writer's camp? Or yeah, you, it was a writing camp. Was Did you see Usher or meet Usher that weekend? Not that weekend. Right. But right after that weekend, Usher said, get him to Atlanta. Flew to Atlanta. Hey, man, and it's <laughs> crazy because when you explain it, mm-hmm. it's like, man, things just start happening. But I yeah. know that there's gaps and there's time and yeah. there, everything that comes with it, there, mm-hmm. you know. And I always tell people and say, oh, it's an overnight success. I always say, man, it was a long night then. Ooh, if it, you it was know a what I'm long saying? night. And there's a lot of tuition yeah. into the school of experience. So you start off and it's more so, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, yes. I could do that. Oh, yeah, I could write. Yeah. You know? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I could. So now when you start to write, you, but you do have a passion as a singer. Yeah. But you not locked in, but it's like people notice this other talent that you have. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, man, it's hard to get out of that. Yeah. So how do you go from writing yeah. early on? And early on, who were you writing for before you became Eric Bellinger, mm-hmm. the artist? My singing groups. I grew yeah. up. I grew up in singing groups out in L.A. We done performed at every high school, and I was writing for the group. I was engineering for the group. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I just, you were doing all that. That's it was your training. Ten thousand hours. That's exactly. your outliers. That, that's everything right there. Yep. Exactly. Now with the groups, what made you get away from the groups? And not mm-hmm. a bad way. Yeah. No. Nah, it was a. It was a cool thing. I had just been doing it for so long, and it felt like. Man, I don't know. Like, my work ethic ain't the same as these other guys, you know? And you're only as strong as your weakest link. So even if 
maybe there's other times when two of the guys are on point. If there's one guy ever yes, not sir. on point, yes, sir. We all are, yep. you know, getting the brunt of it. So when I wanted to, it was 2010. I remember like, yo, y'all, I want to start writing now, you know. Um, and they had an issue with that. Like, yo, yeah, we like, all yeah. got to go. Yeah, like, yeah, good luck with that. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, on, we man. all got to go. I was like, yo, it's a lot of guys in the studio right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, some situations, it's just like, let me go. And it was a it was a real issue. So I feel like it was just kind of holding me from just doing what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, I just love making music. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't have no type of situation on hold or right, anything. Right, right. But once I was like, yo, I'm out, and I started doing it on my own, I just was able to be the ultimate boss in my day. Yeah. And, you know and, and it's saying? a different focus. When somebody tell you, even if somebody tell you, man, 3.30 in the morning, yeah. You're going to get up at 3.30 in the I'm morning. be there. It, it's hard to have somebody hustle the same way you do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like, it. every interview you got to go to. every and, and in the long run, man, you know, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it, bro. Mm -hmm. So now, after you get with Usher, who else are you writing for? Uh, immediate after that, Chris, uh, Justin Bieber. Because Justin Bieber was signed to Usher. I think, wait, okay, Usher. I, th I know these people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah. Usher, like, I play Usher songs. Like, once I got with him, I'm playing him everything I got. I got this, I got that. So he's like, oh, man, that would be dope on Justin Bieber. Oh, man. As he's saying it, I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> you playing it off like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Next thing you know. Hello? <laughs> Justin? hello? Yeah. yeah, line two? <laughs> yeah. yeah, hello, line two. Hello. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you get you do you ju do Justin. Yeah. Chris Brown Chris comes Brown into the picture. Chris Brown as well because he's RCA and Mark Pitts have Usher and Chris Brown. So the sessions from Chris Brown immediately, I mean from Usher, immediately transferred to Chris Brown. How is it, man, when you write something or you do something so passionately as mm -hmm. an artist. Yeah. How is it when you got to give your baby away? You know, I think I think now I know give the song away. Right, right, right. But then? Then it was tough because it's like, ah, no, because I want to ultimately be an artist. Right. I want to sing songs. That's my ultimate passion. Right. But. Man, you got to strike while that iron is hot. Uh, definitely so. You know, Def so once I, you know, realized, like, and told myself and convinced myself, I can do it again. It was easy. Damn. It was easy. And then you got to think, and at, at some point you got to sit and pep talk yourself, like, man, it's Chris Brown. Yep. Man, it's Usher. Yep. You know, it's Justin Bieber. You yep. know, it wasn't like you wrote something for my homeboy Frank Bonilla out in Arizona. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, but, but it's still hard. Do, do you find yourself... Not gritting your teeth, but mm -hmm. that, like, did they do right by your work? Not they when did. you start to see the sales. They did. Okay. They did. They did, you know? And that's why, because as an independent artist, I've been independent my entire career. Right. Um, so to, to watch it actually have the big budget for the video. Right. You know what I'm saying? The big radio, the big marketing, the big, and now it's on Billboard Awards, and now it's winning Grammys, right. you know? And... Chris Brown just went on tour overseas, and he's opening the tour with Indigo, you know, which is a song that I wrote. So it's like I still feel like I'm a part of it. Um, well, I am, but yeah. I just feel like he's up there, and I feel like I'm right up there with him vibing. Hey, man, that's got to be crazy for you as well, because even when we talk about, like, like Babyface, mm -hmm. Babyface has not given away, I mean, he's selling them, but <laughs> so many hit records yes. that when you see Babyface in concert and he'll start to do the songs that he's written for other people. Yes. The same with Neo. When Neo was sitting in the neighborhood and we're like, man, mm -hmm. do the songs that you wrote. Even when you just said Indigo right now, I'm like, oh my God. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You got to think Chris Brown got a library, a yes. catalog. Yes. And to grab a song, it's special to him to have that. In his live show. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So now when we fast forward to you, when does your look start to come as mm -hmm. an artist? Um, so I released a song called I Don't Want Her mm -hmm. with Problem. Right, right. And that right. was like, that was like 10 years, over 10, that was like 10 years ago. Damn. Yes. Hey, man, you know what's crazy about that time too, though, Eric? I used to hear your name uh -huh. so much. Yeah. And even when you just said that right now, that wasn't on the top of my radar. Mm -hmm. But Problem also is Problem just one of the partners from, from not the yeah. city, but the city. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that was originally a song that Problem's producers, League of Stars, released a mixtape, a producer mixtape. And I was an artist featured on the song. So when the song took off, they was like, 
Yeah, this All right, is hold it. on. This is your song, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. You got to do the shows. You got to perform. But now you got a song on the radio. And I went with Troy Marshall, I remember. And we yeah. just went all over the country. And I'm learning about radio and meeting new people. And since then, it was just the same formula for GOAT, for Type of Wave, for all these other songs. Hey, man, your, your, the way that you, even just your journey of mm-hmm. learning on the way. Yeah. You know, and, and my thing is, man, you could tell somebody. You can sit and teach somebody in a classroom, but you can't have somebody feel what right. that is like when you get thrown out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to just go for yeah, it. Yeah, so now when you when you see other people doing their thing, it's obvious you want yours. For sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, uh, this is the same song, everybody. You know what I mean? This is coming from the same cloth. Right. So that record is fire, and it's number one. Mine has the same potential, so I always believed. Mm. Did you have anybody that tried to put you in that box of like man just keep writing these hits man yeah a lot did of people did you put yourself in the a box a little bit i never did okay i know i knew i knew because at the same time like i started releasing mixtapes and my fan base that i was growing gave me everything that i needed mm-hmm. to feel like oh i'm supposed to be doing this too they love when i come do shows and they get the feeling uh from me that somebody may get from drake but you always knew that you were an artist Yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah. The voice. Yeah. The voice. The pen is cool, but the voice is not. It's if like you no had other. to do only one, yes. which one would you do? Woo! You know, as in I'm writing songs. If I write songs, it's my voice technically. So are you saying? But it's not your voice. <laughs> if <laughs> you I'm writing I'm songs, if I'm writing songs and I put it out. But I'm saying, are you saying no, I'm if just I saying... write songs and only other people cut the song? Exactly. Nah, I'm writing them for me only. Yeah, okay. So you, okay, so you. I don't care to give them away. I, I had to do that, that to, to buy some time because yeah. I got out the group. And right, right, like, right. They was like, yo. Where the fellas at in the yeah. group now? They doing their thing. Okay. I, re- I recently linked up with one of the guys. He has a clothing line called St. Hunt, which is I love the clothing line. Yes, One of the guys, a uh, guy, he got married and it's dope. He's married to the same girl he was with when we was in a group. You I know heard what I mean? that. So that so to life me, is working out. Life is good for him. Right, right. They didn't just finish a tour or nothing, though, right? No, sir. All right. They don't have a new album out. Okay. It's not dropping. Okay. But okay, but they don't have a okay. Just check. I just wanted to see. <laughs> nah, I didn't know. I now I'm like, see. oh, that's where he. <laughs> no, I just, I just, <laughs> he has such a straight face <laughs> with it. I'm like, <laughs> I got answers. You got. <laughs> yeah. How many Grammys do you have? One, two. Uh, we have one Grammy, mm-hmm. uh, for the Chris Brown Fame album, and I got one Grammy nomination for my album New Light. Hey man, where's your Grammy at? It's at his house, bro. I heard that. Every time I go over there, I'll be like, you hey, ready man, for me to take it yet? They, don't they, give only, everybody they only gave us one for the whole album. You would think they'd make, let somebody pay for it. Even like, yeah. man. Hey, I'll be looking at it like. And then when you hey. go to Chris' house, Chris got, he got like one of these Wonderland houses. Yeah. yeah. But he know where the Grammys are at, though. For sure. Oh, okay. It's not like when <laughs> the Lakers sure. win a championship, only one person gets a ring. Yeah. That's uh-huh. crazy. Like, like that's in here to get the ring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But everybody don't get that trophy, yeah. that basketball trophy either. Yeah. But you know you got it. Yeah, exactly. Hell yeah, man. You need exactly. to go like on Hollywood Boulevard. They don't have one of those like at a shop. <laughs> they they do. fake ass Oscars <laughs> they out do. there. I, 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 man, you know what? Damn, I, I wish I would have known that you didn't have it, man. I would have presented you with a, with a Grammy. It'll be greater later, man. You got like, way more music coming. Later. We'll sit down. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Call. I'll present you with your, with your, with your Grammy. Yeah, I you appreciate know what I'm saying? that. Yeah. Talk to me about the new music, bro. New music, man. Best work yet. And I uh, linked up with my family and fellow collaborator, Hitmaker. Hey, man. Hitmaker, that's a perfect name for him. Yeah. You know what I'm sure. saying? And you know what I love about Hitmaker, too, man? Not only being an artist early on with his Young Berg thing. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. finding what his what is called because he was a hella mm-hmm. artist don't yeah. get it messed up mm-hmm. but finding what his calling was to stay in that business yeah. you know and sometimes man being the guy in front of the mic sometimes that's cruel yeah you know what i'm saying uh-huh. and sometimes man you know your staying power don't stay because we're real fickle anyway yeah we love you today and you know we can hate you tonight mm-hmm. but just being able to link and continue to do great music yeah man that dude resilience. is amazing man resilience bro so what's the project y'all have now so this is 1-800 hit easy line two line man. two this is part two of the first album we dropped a couple years ago um and it just felt right to do it again last time it was in a pandemic so yeah yeah <laughs> it, yeah, yeah it didn't get the proper push right so now you know we're able to focus Focus in and just go crazy. We attached it with the tour, and so I've been promoting the album while on the tour. Now we're promoting a single, and it's all coming together. And is the tour obsession? 
this. It's the Obsession the Tour. The Obsession Tour. Yes, sir. All right, and did you just finish up, or are you going to do another leg? Just finished up, but we're thinking about doing an international leg. We've been getting a lot of calls lately, and, you know, at first it was like one show, so I just looked at it like it was a one-off, but then right. it was like another country. I'm like, hold on, let's let's actually pitch this you idea, know, man, I, gotta I go think we can get, make it get these stamps. happen. Yeah, you're like, I got to go get <laughs> yeah, these stamps. Go, like, what, go. What's going on? Uh-huh. What did you do during the pandemic? And I yeah. know you're always creating music, but yeah. we were in a time, man, of uncertainty. It was We didn't know yeah when we was coming out like you know Mm -hmm. did you find yourself writing more creative or yeah for sure i did more music um but i i spent more time with my kids say it so the parents you know we had to become the parents you know while they was on the zooms you can't just let them loose right right right. so we're there the whole time when he gets off the zoom he got you know extra stuff we had him reading and just giving him extra assignments at first it was like here read this and you'll be over there and you'll be quiet now he likes to read like crazy you know what i mean like man but you know what's crazy about that too eric man is that you wouldn't have sat down yeah. Like the, the pandemic made us sit down mm-hmm. and made us like, OK, more time, more this, more that. You wouldn't have said, hey, man, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a year and just watch you and, and <laughs> no, hand you not. books and, yeah. or exactly. two years. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you had to have this pandemic. Yes. But you also had to do that music. Exactly. So you had to do mm-hmm. your this and that. And it was it was, it was always like kind of a a, a balance, yeah, a balance man. game. It was you know dope. what I'm saying? It was dope. Taught yeah. him, taught him meditation. Yeah. Now he's asking. And how old is he now? He's eight. I heard that. Yeah. Oh, so you 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 right here still in them years of uh-huh. influence and sponges oh, yeah. and everything, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for real. But you was in the studio a lot too? Home studio? Yeah, you got had a home studio. So I was able to record. I did a lot of albums on live with people too yeah. and dropped them. And, uh, you know, I was able to just continue the consistency uh because i'm writing it so i didn't need to know i didn't need nobody i'm engineering it i'm doing everything on live i got the live in my booth engineering writing singing yeah you're working too hard bro too much man yeah you're making us look bad you know what i'm saying (laughs) i I like doing the bare medium you know what i'm saying like my album my album be called mediocre you know what i'm saying be like man you like yeah it's all right you know what i'm saying i think it's about the most mediocre you know Volume I put together. Hey, but look, the consistency, even in the medi- mediocrity, yeah. will take you somewhere. That's what I, uh, we see it now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We 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 definitely see it now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Hello, that, easy call, brother. We see, we definitely see that now, man. Yeah, man. So with the album being available for us right now, bro, and mm-hmm. you get a chance to kind of get out there. Yeah. Th- does it feel different now? That we and, and people always say it sounds cliche. And we say, oh man, the world opened back up. Yeah. But we see. We're back outside yeah. and we're back at shows. Yep. And were you missing that? I was. Yeah, yeah. I was missing that because, yeah, they had me doing a lot of the shows where it's nobody there in the room with me. Oh, man. But everybody's on live coming. Oh, man. Hey, dude, let me tell you. What was that? EV, I hated those times. I hated Zoom mm-hmm. interviews. Me too. I did a comedy show where everybody's like sitting, it was like monitors in front of us and everybody was sitting at home and I was like, we did a comedy show where everybody was in trucks, and I was like, man, yeah. I don't want this. I don't want this. Yeah, I couldn't wait to come out, you know, to where mm-hmm. we are right now. Yeah, bro. for real. Nah. And, 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 and you say, like, even with the last one, you know, line one, it mm-hmm. was like, dude, we did a great volume of music. Yeah. But you you got to have everything. It's and, important. You know what I'm saying? Like, Marking, a car just yeah. don't run on gas. You got to have right. oil. You, you, know, yeah. you got to have everything to make that vehicle work. Mm-hmm. You know, so you saw, like, okay, well, we we, we with line two. We out there. We out there. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. It's been great. Yeah, man. Yes, what about video wise? Video wise, we got four videos. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so. I'm pretty sure you directed all those. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We this got dude four. Don't want nobody to I, had, I had hands involved for sure. Yeah, I know yeah. you did. Listen, but this last one, we got so one of them was with Blast. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Blast. We got something to see. Um one of very them. Very talented as well. Yes, very talented. Very talented. LA, man. West Coast. Mm-hmm. Let's Come on, go. bro. And then the last one we did is with Fabulous and yeah. Corday. Yeah, man. Hey, man, and Fabulous did his thing. Corday flipped. Oh, he did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, how do you pick who you wanna who you wanna work with? Um, usually just the people that I have relationship right. with. You know, I've went through the the process of let's get the biggest artists we can and and then see if they show up to post. Right, right, right. See right. if they're willing to come to the video. But now it's like, nah, we gotta just work with family, the people that wanna see you win. So, um, Corday, I had just been working with him like 
we just did a week together. Got some crazy songs for his project um, that we was working on. And then it was just like, yo, bro, I got this song. You we, Would you be down to jump on it? He said, play it for me. He loved it. Easy. But you know what, man? In the business, you always hear, man, we got to do something together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. then you'll see that it you'll really see. comes together. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like, oh, this is, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is that Varnell Hill, right? Yeah, yeah. This, hey, hey, like, this, <laughs> like, like, this, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it comes with the business. It does. The, the point game. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, I got you. Yeah, man. But, you know, you have to just know and remember those things, not take it personal, right. and keep it pushing. Right. Mm -hmm. And early on, bro, it's almost like you got a game of not just proving yourself, but you also think, like, man, like, when you get with someone, like, damn, Will they work with me too? Did you ever have yeah. that? Yeah, some people I haven't even asked. Yeah, because I but respect. But you know something coming too, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just like, uh, I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm gonna just wait until I know I'm in position fully to where it's like it's more mutual. Hey man, when I ask you about music in uh, in the bloodline, right? Mm -hmm. Are you related to Bobby Day? Yes, that's my mom's dad. And so Bobby <clears> Day, <throat> for mm -hmm. those that know, Bobby Day didn't write Rock and Robin. No, but no, he no. turned that and, and and little bitty pretty one. Yeah, he wrote so. Yeah, he did little bitty pretty one. Yeah, <clears throat> and those two. So it's in your bloodline for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And and with that being, that's mom's pops. Yeah, granddad. Yes. You know, do your family trip off of where you are in music now? <sighs> they they used to it, right? You know, okay. um, and, and it's been a long and road. me. Yeah, it's been a long time. Um, but me, I always was like, oh, grandpa did it. Yeah, I could do this for sure. You know what I mean? And I just kept at it. And he was the first person that I seen have a studio in the crib. So I literally just followed his footsteps. And you seeing this like a major early on in your life? Yeah, I'm oh, talking bro. about. Mm -hmm. So do you ever feel that this was destiny? Like I, I do. I do, man. First mixtape was called Born to Sing. And I didn't know that I was going to be singing. I want to play football. I'm thinking I'm going to go to the NFL. Man, so <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you about, too. Like, mm -hmm. like what were you, you You have this thing. Yeah. But you also have earlier dreams as well. You know, because mm -hmm. if you ask a kid what they want to be, most kids don't say one thing. It's all oh, police officer, this, yeah. this, this, this. And uh -huh. now it's unchanged. The artist is. So you had these other dreams. Other dreams. Music was nowhere in the picture. And so with football, mm -hmm. Were you already playing like Pop Warner? Did you play yes, high school? Yes, Pop Warner at six years old. So I had been, man, Norwalk, Santa Fe Springs, Saints. And then I went to Santa Fe High and I, I played football. I was like first team, all everything, going to play college and got hurt in the 605 CIF game. Hey, man, so when you get hurt, mm -hmm. does that feel like a roadblock or a dead end? At the time, at, time. at the time, it felt like um, a roadblock. Mm -hmm. You know, I just felt like, you know, I would red shirt, I would mm. do rehab, and I would just take my time to get better. But then I got a call to audition to be in a singing group, and immediately was like, I ain't gotta get hit no more. Right? Yeah, <laughs> man. Dude. And uh, we got signed. We got signed to Epic like immediately. So football is over. Football Bef is over. Before. The artist money comes in. Mm -hmm. Did you have to have like regular jobs? Oh yeah, yeah. Where did you work at? Oh, I worked at Chuck E. Cheese, yeah. Togo's, <gasps> Best hey, Buy, man, wait, Denny's. Chuck, what, what is what is in the Chuck E. Cheese blocks that the kids jump into? <laughs> like no. you, you, you have you have two kids now. All righty, would you throw your kids into them Chuck E. Cheese blocks? You know, with COVID. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like it's uh, different. It's different because it was it was nasty in there. It was slobbing. Yeah. I was Chucky, so you that's know, what I wanted oh, to ask if you were Chucky. Man. I was Harlem oh shaking God. in a suit for yeah. sure, uh, hitting on a mom. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, you like, can't see me, like, but I can see you. How do you hit on a mom in a Chuck E. Cheese suit? You know, when they take a pitch, you just try to like keep the arm uh, around. Yeah, man. You know, you do, you did, this is your, this like, is your big move. Like, look at me. When you do this, <laughs> it just looks innocent. You feel man. me? Man. So is that like a promotion? Motion when you get in the suit, or is that's that like, like birthday time? Okay, but it's one of the kids. Do birthdays. everybody want to get in the suit though? Like, is there? Nah. Chucky oh, oh, I thought it was. I thought that was a, like I get to be Chucky till I got in there and I was sweating like backdrop. <laughs> yeah. And how often do they clean? <laughs> how often do they clean the? I have never ever. seen it clean. Yeah. It was. It was like always there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like gonna have, they're gonna have. No. How many Chuck E. Cheese? Uh, uh, 
outfits, costumes. Maybe, are maybe in like each one. two, maybe like two fits, but it's a full different suit. Oh man! You had the jersey. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> like <laughs> <was> feeling <laughs> athletic. <laughs> right. You know, that's, what that's, that's summer wear. Yeah, you that's summer wear. That's summer wear. <laughs> yeah. So you worked at Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese, Togos, oh, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, pickles, and pepperoncinis. Let mm-hmm. me know. I got you. Damn. <laughs> now you going to Togos? Be like, y'all know y'all making that wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, hey, hey. One too many pepperoncinis, brother. And so Best Buy. Best Buy. I was a cashier, so I was trying. Trying to oh upcharge everybody God. for the PRPs. Like, yeah. yo, dude, would you love a product placement plan? Oh, if anything yeah. happens for the next two, three oh, years, Lord. I got you. You know you got to have this with it, too. This is the oil. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, exactly. Uh, paper route. I, done, oh, I know man. L.A. I know L.A. like the back of my hand. Man, I done via bike or was your parents? With. Were you throwing out the window? Oh, my Frisbee game's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Right to the porch. Hello. Hey, man. So Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck Togos. E. Cheese. Togos. Denny's. Denny's. Best Buy. Denny's. Best Buy. You got paper route. Did you work nights you got, at Big? You got uh, the shoe store, foot action. You got oh, American so you, Eagle Outfitters. Oh, so you worked. Yeah. You took care of yours. Yeah, I wasn't playing. But always had music or something so-called bigger. <sighs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was You got to have a job, but that's why I had so many jobs because I always got fired. Like, right. I remember I, I got fired from Up Against the Wall of Fox Hills Mall hey. because I was I had a I session. It. it was like I got to choose up, and I would just have to get another job. So hey, that's man, why it was so frequent. When you say I have a session, right, mm-hmm. at the moment it must have sound crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when you look back at it and you Eric Bellinger Grammy yeah. Award winning multi, you know, you yes. got a catalog. Yeah. It sounds like, oh, yeah, of course he believed in himself. Yeah. But I know, and, and with my, even with my son, my son mm-hmm. is 16, and you want to put it all into your kids. You want to mm-hmm. believe it. But if they came home with like, Dad, I quit. You like mm. it was like especially up against the wall. I had yeah. the discount. They had the <laughs> yeah. You you quit on everybody. Yeah. Even your dad was like, damn, Eric, I thought I taught you better. Like, man, please tell me that you walked out with the Jordans. Nah. <laughs> Did you get them? Yeah, at least my size. Yeah, yeah Did man. Did you get them? But nah, I remember leaving the uh, the opener, the the uh, manager of the store. It was supposed to be me and him uh, opening. <laughs> I left it to him to you, do it. So you you didn't even do you didn't even do a two hours notice, let alone a two week. Yeah, he had you, to do you his thing, at your on thing that. Like, man, he I had to do his thing. I'm sorry, you know, Kelly. I'm sorry, Kelly. You gave you, you it worked, worked out, out for me, and I let you down. Yeah. But here we are. Yeah, man. People are like, man, where are you working at now? Oh, I'm not there no more. <laughs> I had to leave. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not there no more. I, I can't imagine what your application looked like. You know, you got to put oh, your last job and how oh long you were there. He was like, oh man, like you were the pay period king. My man For got sure. one check from everywhere. <laughs> He's like, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, nah, but it that's worked. That's what it was. That's you know what, what I'm saying? Was. But it worked, bro. Mm-hmm. You I know wasn't what I'm afraid saying? to get a job, man. Any aspiring artists out there, go get a job, bro. It's okay. Yeah. And, and, and that's what a lot of people don't understand, too, man. Because we look at social media, Eric Bellinger, we think, like, this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Everybody's made it. People don't see the grind. People don't see, you know, the sacrifices, things yeah. of that nature. And people think that you automatically get in the game. Right. And you automatically make this money and you can go out and get these Mm -hmm. diamonds and get all this stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And when you say, hey, for young people that's trying to get in or if you're trying to get in at whatever age, keep keep a gig, too. Keep a gig, man, until they break you off something that you can sustain yourself for a few months. Right. In order to make money from what you're currently doing. And early on, when you start seeing the money where you're like, man, this what is this? First check was like like 50. 50 what? Bandos. Oh, really? Though? So to me, I was like, what? Damn. We good. Oh, you yeah. know, I quit. Then, yeah, you were like, man, 50,000, I'm set for life. <laughs> yeah. Man. That was going fast. I remember I, I, my first radio deal, man. Uh-huh. I remember I was like, oh, man. I, I used to tell people, dude, I'm rich. <laughs> And then I was like, Dude, I saw taxes. I was like, because I never paid taxes before. Uh-huh. Don't ask me why. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I looked and I was like, oh, no, man, I'm, this ain't it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Nah, so, exactly. so you see early on, you learn that quickly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That quick, quick. Because you got to you gotta sustain yourself. You know, you got to be able to pay the bills and, and create stress free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know what? You don't learn that until you're in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you're in that pool, that's when you're like, oh, okay, I got to swim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I definitely got to swim. That's it. So with the body of work that you have now, man, mm-hmm. and you say that, do you feel like this is that body of work where you're like, man, either we took our time mm-hmm. or did we did everything right? Is that yeah. what you feel that you have now? I do, man. I mm-hmm. do. And and a lot of times I feel like that, but looking back in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I was missing that, though. Mm-hmm. I was missing that, though. So, you know, I just be a real one with myself and do better on the next time can you can you listen to your old music 
Yes, I love it. Do you listen to it with enjoyment or do you mm -hmm. listen critically? I listen with enjoyment right. and and like, wow. Yeah. You know, like I was saying this then because it's it's different layers and different levels of, you know, versions of Eric Bellinger because some I wore my heart on my sleeve my mm -hmm. whole career. So these songs, I was outside going right, crazy. Right, right, right. These songs, I was married and I just got married and now it's like, Cover season one, cover season two, cover season three, because I'm just so in love. Then after that, it's like, okay, I found myself a little bit more, and you, it reflects in the music. So it's different journeys that I'm able to yeah, appreciate about, about to, myself. Yeah, so you go through these life journeys, mm -hmm. and that reflects in your music as well. Yeah, man. Did it change sleeve. when you had kids? It did. Yeah. It did. It did. You know, when I'm writing now, um, every song that I, that I compose has to have meaning and mm -hmm. purpose. We're not just making songs to stunt. Right. We're not just making songs. We're not talk down talking women, you know. So now it's just all respectful and hopeful and inspiring to people, I hope. Is it sometimes hard, Eric, to find a place, though? You know, because when mm -hmm. you say we're not disrespecting women, we're not doing this, there's mm -hmm. some music that for some reason that goes a little bit Quicker. Further when and it does, yeah, for, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It does. And then you'll hear these great voice and great artists, and it's like, it's more of a, like, ah, uh, you know, yeah. like the outlets and things mm -hmm. of that nature. People find it and people play yeah. it. But it's, it's, it seems like it's a different yeah. kind of grind. It is. It is. And, you know, in, uh, Anthony Hamilton did a, 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 a um, post on April Fool's. I didn't realize it was April Fool's when he said it, but he was like, he explained that he was quitting music. He got me. I didn't realize it was right. April Fool's. You were but working. he was working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, was, he was really like, adamant on why he was quitting and he was just naming so many things like the business isn't the same anymore things have it was changed. all true it was all true <laughs> so i was like wow i feel you next day he said i got y'all i had to do it but i was like hey bro yeah it was you, a lot like that there. was real until you said <laughs> april fool <laughs> exactly yeah like that 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 was real passionate i didn't yeah, read it man. but the way you explained it yeah that was that it's was like, real passionate yeah so once i once i got that i was like i feel you but Luckily, I'm not doing it for applause. I'm doing right. it for a cause. I'm doing it for the way it makes me feel when I'm in the booth and I got my thought off. Whew. Mm -hmm. That was what I was trying to think of, and that's what you know I wanted to articulate. Now it's in MP3 form. Now it's out there, and it's touching somebody. At that point, I did my job. I'm happy I can move on to the next situation. Hey, man, when you did the tiny desk with Usher, mm -hmm. where did they do that at? DC. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't I didn't know that. And that's what watch this. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Like, I'm like, if you see me in the peripheral right, right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, watch this. If you're probably like, man, that looks stupid, then it blew it. You're like, oh genius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start walking yeah. around yeah. like yeah. Yeah. you know. So have you and Usher always been like like cool? I, I'm not saying y'all yeah. going out bowling in there. No, 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 no. But yeah, super cool, man. From the first time that how talented um, is I he, worked man? with him. Ah. The GOAT. He's my GOAT. Yeah, you know what I mean? He's, the in my mind, like the king, for sure. So to to be able to work with him as a songwriter, and then fast forward, we, we do the Tiny Desk, we do the Something in the Water Festival, and he's giving me flowers and singing my praises. Like, And he's an incredible singer, and he's an incredible artist. I'm like, wow. But Usher recognized it, too. And Usher mm -hmm. been fighting that for years, bro. Fighting mm -hmm. for, for R&B, yeah. fighting for talent, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just saw Usher at Dreamville. Oh, yeah. And watching that Dreamville audience mm -hmm. and throughout the whole, you know, City Girls and everybody that hit that stage. Then when he closed out his night mm -hmm. and watching that crowd, I was like, dude, music is not just universal. Mm -mm. Demographics, genres, genders. Like, yes. he killed that. He killed it, bro. Yeah, man. It's different, And that man. show you that good music wins. And he yeah. performed. Oh, yeah. I was sitting down. I was watching at the house, Eric, and I was mm -hmm. tired. He's not taking. Yeah, he's not taking a second off, a song off, a syllable off. Yeah, a hit off. Yeah, man. He's still hitting them. I'm hard. like, Usher, you doing too much? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to bring a bar stool out there. Yeah, man. On, on yeah. No, nah, for <laughs> real, for real. I seen the Vegas, the Vegas show. Yeah, man. And that I was just like, what? When he does the skating. Yeah. I'm like, man, what are you made of? Bro? He's on something different. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Does that keep you going as well? You see inspiration in that? Yes, for sure, man. I feel like we have to have. Um, that example, you yeah, know, man. we don't have too many people out here as the example. So I feel like looking at him is like, man, that's who we had. But I don't I know he's not going to be out there forever on right. skates. So I'm like, cool. I have to exemplify the example. Right. You should get on like a little one of the little bikes. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the little circus bikes. That's it. And you small the cycle? Yeah, the you small should, yeah. And then you roll up to your own little tiny desk. You should do it. It's a series called Tiny Bikes. With the tiny bikes. <laughs> yeah, I, man. I Let's saying. not talk about it. Because people watching this and yeah, everything. People yeah. listening to Once it. Once it's in the atmosphere, somebody might take it. Exactly, man. That's what we're dealing with. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly who we're dealing Thievery, with. Thievery, copycats. So, so we, we definitely got to be careful with yes, that. Yes, yes. You know, believe that. I want to come back, man, and I want to do a thing which you call For Real, For Real. Okay. All right, and with For Real, For Real, I'm just going to ask you some questions about you if it's for real big that's for real if it's false for false he was offered a football scholarship to usc but real, turned it down for real for real really yes sir so were you injured then or it was it was, it was in the atmosphere before the injury so that so it was after my high school entire you know career and season ended mm -hmm. and then you know they got the 605 game and I was so coming back, coming back. It was a, it was the All Star game. It wasn't even season, oh. and it was a six oh five practice. Oh, so you know, in practice and in, in school, you scrimmaging against your own team. So you had already You're turned not down. Nothing. No, no, no. USC? I was rolling. I was going. Oh. I was going. I was already. I had. I had practices that I had started going to at SE. Oh already. my God, bro! Yeah. What was the injury? Uh, knee injury. Ooh. One one of the guys on the other team is like five guys from each school. So when we did our scrimmages at the end of the practice play, the guy takes my knee out. In my school, I'm used to like right, right, play, right. We practicing. Dude was trying to win a spot on the oh, on the field. Oh, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. I'm like, bro. Hey man, he probably been at the one of your concerts, standing there looking back at you because he's security. Like looking back, like you know what I mean. <laughs> you, know, you know how now, man, the security they party even more than the audience. Yeah, uh, you ever notice how they be standing in front of the stage? Oh wait, like, I used to be CSC. I used to wear yeah, a jacket. <laughs> so really, oh, the stage is back there. You're supposed to be here, militant. You're not even looking at the stage, dude. You worked the security too. What? The yellow jacket, Rose Bowl. Concerts. Oh man. Oh hey dude, that's why you know from you know the music <laughs> business from all angles, bro. From all angles. From all angles. Yeah. For real, for real. Brandy was the first session that you uh, that you was in that you got you were kind of starstruck. For real, for real. Really? Yeah. Favorite singer of all times, you know. And she's cutting vocals. How's that? Incredible. Oh, How's yeah. That? Amazing. Right. How's that? I couldn't believe it. Right. Yeah. How's that? Beautiful. She was like, I didn't even say nothing. All right. Sorry about that. Is, is it hard when you're working with someone like Brandy or someone to tell them, do that again? Was it, You got it yeah. now. And I got it now. But after she told me, she was like, yo, you're going to have to step out of ammo for a second, bro. Right. I'm like, oh, my oh, so bad. she said it. Yeah, she's let me know. Like, yo, if I'm doing it, you know. And you Brandy gotta, a real one. You got to let me know. You know what I mean? If it's not, you got to let me know. I love what you do, too. Snapped out of it. Get it again. Yeah. You know, now, now you now you making her do it. She's like, oh, I think we could do better. I think we could do better. Right, average. Do? Average. Just uh, take it from the top. One take. One take from the top. One you take. do bad. Please. You know Please. All right. Now, for real, for real, Megan Good mm -hmm. is his sister-in-law. Yes. Damn. Yes, sir. Wow. You just hiding all kind of stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, uh, man, so my wife, Lamaya, good. Mm -hmm. We met. Oh, yeah, we met in when I was in my very first group, right out of high school. She was in a singing group called Isis. They had a song, Day and Night, single for the rest of my life. And we was we had the same manager. So back then, 20 years ago, she five years older than me. Uh -huh. I was a young buck at the right, time. Right, especially five years yeah. when you're younger. 18 and 23. Yeah, it seems real big. Yeah, so she she let me, uh, you know, grow up, do my do my swag, but I was always vibing. We was always, you know, locked in, and I feel like 20 years later, it was just bound to happen. Damn, you got a lot of great Ooh, wow. journeys, man. Yeah, so I'm with my friend friend. All righty. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? It's for different. real mm -hmm. or for false, he has a fear of spiders. That's for false for false. Okay, so you don't you know don't have a fear of nah, spiders. Where they at? Cause okay. I gotta be the man of the house, and wifey is terrified of spiders. Really? <laughs> terrified. And you know it's a trip, man. Is that's the only thing that I thought for sure on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, he brought it. He brought it. Oh my god! Oh, look, man. look, look, look. <laughs> 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 he pulled out a couple of spiders, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all missed it. I'm just, Daddy uh, Long Legs so, so is that, everywhere right so now. So that, so that's f for false. Yeah. What, what do you have a fear of? Um, a fear of 
It's anything. not anything really on the surface then. Yeah, because we the all got that like, man, I have a fear of dying. I don't want to leave my oh, yeah. kids. Like those yeah. are those yeah. are broad strokes. Yeah, what, nah. so nothing you don't mess with. Like oh, I don't mess with heights or. Um, nah, man, I didn't jump out of plane. Uh, mm. I'm cool, man. Damn, I heard that. I'm at peace, man. As afraid, I'm afraid of God. <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> nothing, I, I'm not. I'm not really. Not the let's dark. Let's try it all. I don't know, man. Six that's here with you. She said that <laughs> you're afraid of putting your right shoe on before you left. Ooh. You know what I'm Listen. saying? Like, it's gonna be a bit. Do you have superstitions? Superstition? I have a gang of nah, them, man. man. I don't want to put them on you. What? Yeah, I just, I, I just do like, I do like little bets with myself. Mm -hmm. I do like, man, if I see five white cars before I get to the house, it's gonna be a good day. Mm -hmm. Or I see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, and then us as blacks, it's like, oh, my left eye's jumping. Oh, that's bad luck. <laughs> you know? Oh, my hands are itching. Oh, some money's coming in. You know? Oh, my ears. Somebody's yeah. talking about me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, man. I think, I think I'm good. I oh. think, I think. I'm well, maybe ready. you're just I'm better ready. than us. I'm ready. Yeah, that's what you're saying. <laughs> Way better. <laughs> man, <yeah. laughs> you know? I joke. I can't. I joke. I can't. <laughs> he likes extreme sports. Yes. Come on, man. Let's you didn't crazy. learn enough from getting your knee busted up. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. <laughs> yeah. Well, Other you out there stuff? on the field. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. True, so true, true. now, what's extreme sports to you? Uh, so I'm not a gamer, right, right. But I love skateboarding. I love golfing. I love snowboarding. Like hands on or feet on the board? Like you skateboard? Yeah. I'm skateboarding. I'm kick flips. I'm ollies. I'm all that. I'm doing tricks and snowboarding. I'm doing oh. jumps in the snow. Oh my god, man! Let me tell you, man. I went snowboarding, and like my thing with snowboarding, Eric is I look the part. Like, when you mm -hmm. see me, you, you be like, there. oh, my God, this dude, you know, I'm booted Look up. Look at the I jacket. Got, oh, my God. Put me out there. Even on them bunny slopes, I'm like, ooh, whoa. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My first time trying to um, snowboard. Bit the dust. I wish I did bite the dust. I almost broke my ankle. What? Bro, if my, if my ankle wasn't that secure in that boot, my ankle would have snapped. They had to send. They had to send the little, the little uh, medical staff <laughs> yeah, up there. Like, yeah, mm, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, sorry, you guys. Nah, that joint crazy. That your foot is stuck, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. If you don't know how to control, it's crazy. And then, I, and, and maybe that's some people' dream. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when you get a certain age, there's just some stuff you shouldn't do anyway. Yeah, for sure. And and, and that right there showed me. Yeah. That yeah. and starting. Jumping, yeah. And, and jumping off a boat in Turks and Caicos, too. As soon as I hit the water, uh, I was like, oh, yeah, you're hurt. Listen. Yeah, as soon as I hit the water, I was like, yeah, hey, you're hurt. Hey, hey that I'm, was stupid. I love jumping off the boat in the water, right? But lately, I've been seeing so many videos on TikTok where it's a shark right there waiting. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's right hey, there. Hey, dude, I remember I was swimming in I'm the ocean one time, and no I was more. wide leg, kicking my legs out. Then I was like... Oh, yeah, this is how it happens. <laughs> I'm like, yep, this is how it happens. You know what I'm saying? Then I get dunked here today by Charlemagne or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, nah, man. Like, and you know when people no feel for you, they like, man. But somebody going to ask, like, dude, what were you doing out there? <laughs> yeah. Stupid. Like, like, getting shot is bad. Getting shot in your ass. People are like, oh, he got shot in his ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he got shot in his ass. That's it, more normal it's, than it. It's all bad, though. So if I'm out there and a shark eat my leg, it's like the, like if if I'm at the house yeah. on my couch and a shark bite my leg, that's strange. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but if you're jumping in his territory, come on now, you're yeah. Right, then it's like, right. dude, what was that shark doing in the ocean? It's the ocean. <laughs> it's the ocean. You know bro. what I'm saying? They said it was that shark over here. <laughs> yeah. It's the ocean. Bro. Oh yeah, I love when people know. say like, oh, you know, my dog, he don't bite. I'm like, dude, well, how does he chew? <laughs> how does he eat? That's it's, good. It's one. It's one, all you need good. is one incident. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? All you need uh -huh. is one. Yeah. Believe that for real. For real. We got Eric Bellinger in the neighborhood. Ooh, big boys neighborhood. Boy. Eric, I heard she that heard. You, uh -huh. that you might be uh, jumping into your acting Ooh. career. Yes. Tell us. That's what's next, man. Easy on your TV. Film intelligent is time. Television is time. So I got a a, a cameo coming real soon. A uh, show called Sacrifice on BT. Check go for ahead me. now. Yes, sir. Nice. So, you yeah, trying to do it all? Huh? I'm trying to go crazy. I ain't mad. Have at you always you, bro. wanted to act? as well no yeah no, no like all that other stuff you didn't want to do no <laughs> did i didn't want to do that i i i just but i like martin you feel mm -hmm. me i like fresh prince you right. know and, and studying those guys mm -hmm. when it comes time to you know me to just jump in and go it's like oh i can channel this this energy that i've studied and not by not even by knowing just by yeah. trying to be martin martin and mimicking different scenes Hey, man, I know that Vince Staples got a show coming with Kenya Barris. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see that. 
Yeah. Just the way when he's in, like, there's just some people that you're like, man, they got it. Mm-hmm. Your personality and how worldly and how much you've done. Yeah. Let me know that you have it. Yes. You know, there's not a job that we mentioned that you haven't done yet. Listen, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I made sandwiches, people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cool. He was Chuck E. Cheese. I was Chuck E. So Cheese. Cool. Who? My, my heart can Drake shaking. say that? <laughs> no. No. Drake, can you say you were Chuck E. Cheese? Exactly. First R&B singer to ever say he was Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and then, you know, Soldier Boy gonna come back and say, you know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, I was Jack in the Box. I was the first rapper to be Jack in the Box. That was me in the white hair. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nobody I was, was talking about Chuck E. Cheese until I said it. <laughs> yes. You know, kiss me through the phone. Yeah. Believe yes. that, man. You did say for you, Usher is your goat. Yeah. But we always talk about like the Mount Rushmore of yeah. rappers. What yeah. about the Mount Rushmore of R&B singers for Ooh. you? Yeah, R&B singers. So you got Usher. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Stevie Wonder, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, and Eric Bellinger. I hey. heard that. He's got to go up there. <laughs> hey, man. It's almost tacky that you put yourself up there, but it's okay. <laughs> Listen, I, mean, it, I don't, it's make, your, a, I don't your, make the rules. <laughs> yeah, well, well, really, you, you do break the rules, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. And, and so I, I got to go you somewhere should... else. You want, you want another one? Yeah, Can yeah, I be? Yeah. I'll be. I'll be the honorable mention. Yeah. Oh, okay. all right. <laughs> all right. So you got Usher, Stevie, Michael um, Jackson, Michael Jackson, and I'm giving it to CBZ. Really though, yeah, yeah, the guy is crazy. He's, hey man, now you're gonna be in the car. You're gonna be like, damn, damn I should have did a Mount Mount Rushmore. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> because let me tell you, bro. <laughs> When people ask me that question, who's your favorite father? It's hard for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard for me, man. Yeah, And man. especially there's just some great talent out there. It is. Yeah. It is, man. It's so many people that could have just got named as well. But I would say those are the artists that influence me the most. Hey, man, being a writer and an artist, producer, mm-hmm. engineer, sous chef, everything that you that you do, <laughs> you know, is there a song that you hear yeah. that you wish you would have wrote? Uh yeah, for sure, man. Um, and this probably gonna take some time. <clears throat> no, it's a it's a new it's actually a new song that I love that makes me feel like this is one of the best songs I ever heard. SZA, Kill Bill. Oh, that's hey man, crazy. SZA album is fire. All yeah, of them, man, all of them. Yeah, all of them, man. She going crazy, man. Shout out to SZA for sure. But you know what's crazy, man? With Kill Bill. You can write it, but I wonder if you give that to a, another lady or you give it to mm-hmm. SZA because I think it'll sound different coming from us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just killed mine. They'll be like, whoa, whoa, man, <laughs> yeah. hold on. It's a, it's a, it's a double on. standard for or sure. Yes. It's a double you know standard for <laughs> sure. Hold on, OJ. Hold on. Oh, we got to change up the words. Yeah, we'll man. We'll keep the melody. I just yeah. sent flowers to my ex. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just wrote flowers my Flowers to my ex. <laughs> yeah, flowers to but my ex. That song like, is wild. Oh, yeah. Oh that yeah, man! Wild. I remember years ago, man. I asked um, Lionel Richie that same, same question, mm-hmm. and I said, "Is there a song that you wish you would have written?" And he said, "I wish I would have wrote R. Kelly's 'I Believe I Can Fly.'" Mm. And I was like, "Damn!" He said, "I felt like God was sending that blessing, mm. but He accidentally sent it to the wrong." House. Right, 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 <laughs> you know? right, right. So the same thing with that kill, and especially being a writer mm-hmm. and a producer and a performer. Yes. For you to say, ah, that one. That one was good. Yeah, man. She did that. Yes. And and, and, and I'm so happy for her. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Believe that. You've been to the Rock Nation brunch. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. How many times have you been? That was the first time. And when was that? Uh, a couple months ago. Okay, like so April. you just went to the last one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've never been to a Rock Nation brunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, even when I had LMA in the neighborhood, and she was like, oh, there was way less famous people there. I don't know how to take that. Uh-huh. But uh, <laughs> I, I think it was Wrapped in Love. It was more like a yeah. compliment. It was, ra- it was a compliment. Yeah, it was a compliment. Yeah. She didn't understand it with Howard, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I've never been to that. So what do y'all do yeah. at a Rock Nation brunch? Do, do, yeah. For one, do you eat? Because yes. I like to eat. It's yes, like people yes, don't yes. eat. Big, big, big energy on the food. Mm-hmm. Uh, something special happened to the waffles and the chicken and waffles. Really? How was it so good? Oh, oh, I, don't I don't know. It was gourmet. <laughs> I don't know because I've never been. It was gourmet. Yeah, chicken man. and waffles. Yeah, gourmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the DJ Khaled salad. Yeah, you got to put your mouth to the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. But it was vibes. As soon as I walked in, we ate. Grub. Mm-hmm. You know, even the walkway to the party was a, was violinist. Oh man, like, Paint it was that picture. They huh? went crazy. I like violin. They went crazy. That's bro. crazy, man. I like violin. You I know? like chicken and waffles. Um, but yeah, but I think just seeing the people that you that you love and you know mm-hmm. and love and and all the energy there is just so welcoming. Eric Bellinger, was there anyone at the Rock Nation brunch <laughs> that you like? Man, if they're here, Big could have been here. For sure. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> like, name like five of them. No, I'm just playing. No. <laughs> I was yeah. like, is this rhetorical? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, man, maybe next year. I mean, yes. it, it doesn't make me, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I'm, I, sometimes I do like, damn, I haven't been. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I at least want to turn it down. Listen, <laughs> you know, 2024. Right. Well, we're well you know what, man? We're going. I don't have that in here <laughs> because I got the one that says 2017. I have 2018. <laughs> what you mean? I have 2019. Just I'm other people that's like, I remember people oh, telling me yeah. like, hey, man, 2020 is your year. <laughs> remember, when, remember 2020 when we all had 2020 vision? Mm -hmm. Remember what 2020, going into 2020, we was like, oh, man, I got 2020 vision. And 2020 was a fucked up year. It was the worst. <laughs> man. It was the worst. Kobe. Of uh, the pandemic, right, COVID, right. like I was like, yeah, what is this? Yeah, you don't even see people put this after, <laughs> after like March. People stop even talking about mm -hmm. yes. what they were gonna do for 2020. Nah, for real, man. Yeah, man. But so. nah, that joint is fire, bro. It, oh, you came was, right back was, to it. It was great energy. Wow. You gotta go. That's you gotta nice. go. Oh yeah. Oh, do I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro. Yeah. I'm putting in a word. Nah, uh, uh, <laughs> hey, like, man. Tell him. <laughs> tell him, big Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I tried that one time. Oh. I heard it on the radio all the time. Oh, yeah. Yo, big boy sent me, dog. Yeah, they looked at me like, uh, and? and but your your credit. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, my God. Is, is the Rock Nation brunch, like, I'll pull up to a Diddy party. And there's people outside that's like, oh, uh, yeah, just, uh, is, is Rock Nation brunch filled with people that can't get in or people already know? Nah. Okay. Is everybody going in? Okay, okay. Because at some of them Diddy parties, I love walking up and mm -hmm. people be like, okay, is uh, Jesus in there? <laughs> like, uh, uh, you, yeah, and you're not getting in. So maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe 2024. They're probably going to see this For and get sure. mad. Nah, <laughs> right? man. Like, uh uh. Yeah, man. Nah, you good. Hey, dude, if I see you there 2024, I'm just going to point at you. Like, nah, what yeah, what we going, nah, we taking a flick at Ricardo. <laughs> Hell yeah. As we should. Ella. All right, just checking in with you. Just wanted Most to see. Day. Eric Bellinger, definitely want to thank you for coming into the thank neighborhood, you. hanging out with us, man. 1 800 so Hit Easy Line 2. That's right. It's available out now. for us right now, man. Believe that. Thank you for coming into the neighborhood, hanging Thanks out with for us. Having man. me, man. Yeah, Big good family. energy, man. Thank good you. Good energy, good Thanks, spirit. Babe. Every time I see you on our easy calls. Yes. You know what I'm it's saying? It's big easy call. Hell Energy. But no, I appreciate you, bro. And I can't thank wait you, to dog. see what else is down, down, down the road for you. I appreciate it, dog. Best believe that, man. Eric Bellinger in the neighborhood. Big boy neighborhood.